In this tutorial, we're going back into the first layer. I'm using matte medium. As you can see, I put a little matte medium right on my canvas, and this will help me get these spots. So I'll go back into the background. I'll mix my, I'll take a little bit of water, black, matte medium, and then I'm scumbling in the paint. So that way I'm not covering the entire background again, but I'm glazing it. So if there's any spots or areas where the paint is a bit transparent, um, you know, try to add a little more paint there, but also you can glaze it in. And this will give it a little texture. So just go back in. If you, if you don't have matte medium, you know, thinning your paint down with water works as well. Um, ideally matte medium is a, a little bit better, but, um, if you don't want to buy matte medium, you can use water. Now I left a little area right here um, next to the pitcher and I'm filling it in. I might switch to a smaller brush, you know, if I have any issues with that, but I'm making sure that I fill it in. Now, if you're going over a white spot with a glaze, you're going to have to add more paint because the glaze makes it more transparent and we're trying to achieve a opacity. An opacity is where you cannot see through the paint. You can see I'm kind of scumbling it in and doing circular motions with my brush. And it just gives it a little bit more interest and texture. And I'm making sure that all my edges are attended to in this, in this pass. So the first pass we were really broad and now we're getting specific in the second pass of paint. I'm switching to that small brush to get that edge. And with glaze, if you get any of the glaze into the yellow, you can use a clean brush with water on it to lift it up, or you can use a paper towel. Either or works fine. And I'm just using that small brush to Go along the edge, and I'll do that again in the final video, the final tutorial. So again, I have my reference in front of me. I'm always looking at it to make sure that I'm, I'm capturing the color. So this tutorial is all about the bowl, really, in the picture. I'm using matte medium and black. I'm going back into that cast shadow. I still have some spots that are showing through. So I'm just glazing back some more cool colors into it. And I'm being more specific in this. So I'm looking for transitional tones and color temperature. It's a little purple. I, I wanna be very careful not to add too much purple because it can overpower that. So right below the um, bowl, it's pretty dark. I'm keeping it dark. And I'm just making sure that like that back edge of that shadow is a little rough. So using the glaze can fill in those white spots as well as give the, um, give it more values and more colors. So I'm adding a little bit more blue in the front with purple. and bringing that into the lower part of the vase. In the front of the cast shadow, it gets pretty bright blue, purple, so I'm gonna make sure that I put that in. And there's that, that is reflective light. And that's the tablecloth bouncing back into the cast shadow. Well, it's still within a shadow range though. So I go back and forth a little bit with these colors and making sure that I get the whites as well. The printout has less colors than the actual, if you look at the, the one on the screen, which I would advise you to use.
So adding a little bit of that light back in, getting the bottom of the bowl, keeping my edge. Now I'm making green, yellow, and blue. And I'm adding a little bit of purple. So young, yellow, and blue make green. And then if I add white to it, we get a little bit closer to that bowl color. And that medium. And I'm also making a red violet which is a little bit on the pinker side because across that bowl is a red violet reflection. So I don't want it to be too bright, but it, you will see it in the image. It's very subtle, but it's there and I only need a glaze of it. So like on the left side, it gets blue, like that blue, intense blue I have. On the bottom, it has more of an intense blue-purple. And then, of course, white to lighten it up. And then I'm using that pinkish color. And then on the left side, I don't, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a reflective light in the left corner of the bowl. So even though it's all a blue bowl, there are color changes within the bowl because of the reflection of color and light. I'm glazing down that a little bit, my shadow from before, so that it's more muted and it blends in. You can see I'm making a blue plus yellow plus white and getting a lighter color for the, the right side because it's lighter over there. And I'm making sure that that edge of the bowl is crisp. And also looking at the draw, um, the original photo so that I can see where the edge is. You may not have dealt with edges on your first pass. So I see the bottom of the right bowl, there is white reflecting into it. That's the white of the, the tablecloth reflecting into it. So just take it piece by piece, and then with the matte medium, you can put it all together and fuzz the edges in a blend. Even though it's separation of colors, at the end of the day, you want to make sure that um, it's blended. And if you use brush strokes in the same direction, going around the bowl, it'll feel more realistic. So blue-green next to that big shadow at the top of the bowl. And as the blue-green comes around the bowl towards the edge it gets lighter so I'm trying to do a gradient and I'm blending a lot and you might find and this happens very often that when you start blending that you blend out the color that you originally put so like right here, I'm just making sure that I go back in with that color and the lights and using the matte medium to blend it in. So if you lose the color, it's very easy to go back and just add it back in and don't touch it after you've blended it. And at the bottom of the bowl, um, there's a cast shadow. And right below the cast shadow is where the light hits. At the very bottom of that is a brighter blue. So if you have a thalo blue, this would be great. But if you don't, like me, you're using an ultramarine blue. Um, you kind of have to just try to get as bright as you can. I'm adding white to the right side of that bottom part of the vase so that it can show the light. You know, it's getting closer to the light. So it won't be perfect in color because we're using ultramarine blue, but it'll be close in value. Again, I want to make sure that that edge is clean 
but also darker because um, it's darker where it's making contact with the tablecloth. So glaze really helps you get all those transitional tones and um, creates more interest as well. And things become more solid as you work. So that bowl is starting to become something that I can imagine actually picking up. I, I think I went over that little light, so I'm bringing it back. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush at this point because I have to get into some of the smaller areas, like the ellipse at the top of the bowl. So I'm using blue, white, yellow. And I want to find a, a color that's bright. So the top of the bowl, the ellipse that goes around, Try to control the thickness of that ellipse, the edge. And right below the edge, I see a dark, kind of dark blue-green line. So I'm, I'm making sure I add that in. That's a shadow. And then I can make... a darker color to make sure the shadow is, is captured. As it gets closer to the light, it's going to dissipate, so I'm adding that medium. So the, you don't want to outline anything. Outlining will flatten whatever you're doing. It makes it look flat and more graphic. So try to avoid outlining at all costs and look at the actual edges that exist. There's not an outline that goes around that bowl, but it's a subtle shadow that you can see a line and dissipates when it hits light. And that's where I'll blend. So now making the um, lighter color to go on top where the light's actually hitting. So the right side of that edge has a little bit more yellow in it because it's closer to the yellow vase. And as it gets closer to the center, it's darker and moves into a cooler temperature by adding blue. So this is a really tricky part, um, trying to keep the shape of the ellipse while also painting it. So take your time. And then the ellipse comes back. We can see the back of the bowl and it's brighter than the front of the bowl, but darker inside. So just trying to show that the light's hitting behind Right now I'm making a red violet because the right side of the bowl, the peach is reflecting into the inside of the bowl. So I'm just glazing that in. 
and darkening it so that it feels like it's, you know, turning. And you can see the, the inside of the interior of the bowl. And the edge has that more, more yellow back there. Because it's near the yellow pitcher. And then I want to make sure that the shadow in between the two, I'm adding like a little purple and black so that the dark, the part that's closer to the pitcher is darker. So that it pushes back a little bit. So I'm just using glaze. So yellow, and per, um, yellow, black, and a little yellow, uh, purple in there. Again, it's reflective color and reflective light. So whatever is, you know, whatever shadow you have, you're going to have the color of the object in the shadow as well. And very subtle variations. So into the picture, I just made a red-orange glaze. I'm using a little bit of white into it to make it more pink. And I'm using glaze. So if you don't use glaze, water again. And it's, a, it's really stark right now. It's a very much a graphic shadow. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to make it look like it's turning. So those oranges from those peaches are actually reflecting into... Um, into that shadow. So the bottom part of the shadow is lighter. And then you can see I divided up where the picture actually changes. So there's an edge to that picture. And I'm using a brighter uh, yellow orange there. And at the top of that picture, it actually gets really red. It's so like a red violet. And as it gets closer to the peaches, it becomes a little bit more pink. On the handle, I'm using the same sort of red violet to reestablish the shadows. I might add a little blue into it so it's a little cooler in nature again because it is a shadow. And there is a line. The blue is for the black. So black and blue are in the same. They're both cool in nature. So there is a little black or blue in there. And then as the shadow um, goes around to the back of the handle, I'm diffusing it with some matte medium and more red. So I want to look back at the shape of the shadow. And then we're going to look into the interior, the edge of the picture, and also the interior of the picture. So red, yellow, and purple to do the interior of the picture. I'm mixing red, yellow, and blue. Um, there's a little part in between the spigot and the edge of the picture that's a little bit more gray. 
so I just made it like a complimentary color gray. It's just a little cooler. And I'll put that like red violet over it so everything works together. cross I'm doing a little bit of a cross hatching with the glaze um, so that I can get the contour of the shape so it feels like it's rounding out so going into the yellow I'm making yellow plus orange and brightening up this again a little bit of white right because we had a mid-tone of yellow so now we're bringing in some lights so the lights coming from that right side so the right side of the picture is going to be brighter in yellow and then as it gets closer to the shadow, it's going to be oranger. And you can smooth those two edges together. And at the bottom, I said earlier, there's a bit of a pink. So I'm adding some pink in there. And that's really the reflective um, color of the peaches reflecting back into that picture. So that'll really make it feel three-dimensional if you have a reflective light in there. Just as you did the sphere, you think about it in terms of the core shadow and then you had the reflective light. Um, it's the same thing with this. It's just, you know, thinking about what colors are nearby your object. So I'm using yellow and white, and I'm re-edging that and thinking about, you know, showing where that light is coming from by adding a really bright white and yellow and then an orange in between to make it sure that the form is turning. So you can see from the image that it's starting to really to feel like it's turning. I just added a highlight and then I'm blending it in. And then I noticed that when, in the first pass, there is a shadow actually coming off that blue bowl. So I'm using um, like a little violet and red and I'll add some blue. And I'm being very subtle because I don't want to change the object color too much. But the bottom part of that vase is having the blue bowl reflecting onto it. So I'm using a complementary color to reflect that. And I'm using glaze again. So, you know, I can still see the underlying yellow color, but this way it feels like it has a shadow of that reflection directly on it. And it pushes the bowl, the bottom part of the vase back in space as well. So it's not competing with the blue bowl. I'm using a red orange. Um, again, thinking about edges so it's a really crisp edge and the top part of that um, bottom of the vase i'm calling it like a, a bowl or a ball type shape is more of a bright yellow and then in the middle there's a highlight and as it gets closer to the edge um, it'll be a little bit more subdued So you could add like a slight amount of purple or a cool color into the right side without it going green, obviously. I'm 
and as it gets closer to the highlight, it gets a little warmer. So that's why I would bring in more of the yellow and yellow orange in there. And there's my white for the highlight, and I'm softening the edges. I think when you soft the edges, it really feels like reflective white, as opposed to just putting in dot and calling it a highlight. And then within the um, cast shadow that we did, or the shadow that we did at the bottom of the vase, there's a little bit of a lighter area. Again, this is your reflective light. Going back to the top, using just yellow and white, reestablishing the edge of the picture. Using a small brush, matte medium to make it fluid. And the top of that vase, I missed in my first pass so I can I can actually go in and fix some things because the black has already dried you can see it's starting to feel like it has form So I'm bringing back that light into the handle um, and making sure that I have the shape of the shadow correct and the highlight. So the top of that picture, when painting, I just left it out a little bit. So I'm going back and I'm just fixing it. And that's a really that's a really hard transition because it's it's going over the edge of that handle. So really, just spend time getting the shape of that area and adding a little bit of a brighter color in there so that it feels like it's it's still yellow, but it has a um, hole in it and just going back and just adding a few like little highlights and things that it may be the first time we went around we didn't see real subtle things at this stage where what i'm working on is i'm i'm basically just doing like little little tiny nuances and noodling um, the image. So the, I think the trickiest part that you're going to find once you start really feeling confident in your painting is where do you stop? And I think this is a great place to stop with this painting in terms of the yellow base. 